Sports Video puts you one-on-one -on -one with the stars and is proud to present another in its series of instructional video programs. This tape from the Hockey Series deals with the fundamentals for players at the Pee Wee and Bantam age levels. Your Sports Video instructors are Cindy Bauer and Ivan Cournoyer, Larry Robinson and Doug Carpenter, Bill Barber, Bobby Hull, Doug Jarvis and Jacques Tremblay, Paul Coffey, Mario Lemieux, and Steve Iserman. Attitude is the very, very most important part of our daily routine, be it in business or in sport. And I think the next most important thing is to have fun with it. So let's, uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go through a few of the basic fundamentals of the game of hockey. We're going to have fun doing it. And you guys, with the good wheels and the youth, we're going to show the guys how to get that done. To develop into a great hockey player, we have to know how to execute the basic fundamentals of the game. And the basic fundamentals of our game of hockey is skating, passing, shooting, and positioning. Now let's take a look at the basic fundamental of skating. Okay, fellas, we're going to work on forward skating here. What we're going to try and work on is using the full leg, okay, getting a full leg extension. The biggest mistake a hockey player makes is the fact that he skates from his knees down only. So we want to get a nice long stride to do this nice forward skating, okay, at just a nice medium pace. So you're going to just stretch that leg out straight, right behind on a bit of an angle. You push off from the ball of the foot, okay, not the heel. You push off from the ball of the foot and the toe area. Everything goes forward. What she said is to stretch your legs and your toes at the end. That's the really the mistake the hockey player do. Like she said, they don't go way at the end. So when you skate, don't forget to put your hands and your stick forward. If I go against my shoulder and my arms when I'm skating, I go against the rhythm. So that's why then when I start, I go one, two, three, four. So exactly what she said to you, but put everything forward in the same time too. Full leg extension and using the ball of your foot to push off on every stroke gives you power. Bend your knees and keep your center of gravity low. Move your arms smoothly with your body movement and lean forward for speed. Remember, the stronger skater you are, the better hockey player you're going to be. And the better hockey player you're going to be, the more fun you're going to have. There are two trains of thought when you're in a standing position and you want to start off quickly. I always stood kind of 45 and took off on my toes and then started striding that way. John, let's see how you were taught to do it. It all accomplishes the th same thing. Now, I, John, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to get in a problem with your coach, but I would say that if you were to have taken a few more strides up on your toes like this and then went you'd get that acceleration a little quicker. When you're standing here, you're inhibiting your body weight to help you take off. What you're doing here, you're almost in a, in a uh, off-balance position when you're like this. Now, if you're standing like so, now I can do this and I can throw myself in a different direction. Okay, fellas, we're gonna work on stops and starts now. The idea here, is positioning. When you make a full side stop, you want to make sure that you push your body weight towards this invisible wall. Okay, so you're going to make a good stop, put all your weight on the outside leg, and keep your feet shoulder width apart. Okay, keep your head up. As soon as you look down, you're going to be off balance. So you have to stay low on your knees, push your body weight against that invisible wall or that person. All right and keep your head up. Make sure you stay when you stop more to the middle, the ball of the foot. Okay, don't go up on the toe or back on the heel because you'll just end up falling on your seat. Alright? To demonstrate it first for you, 
just going forward. When you make that stop, you're going to just push hard, okay, and stay there. Don't fall over or break in the waist. Just stay square. You want to stay low because you never know when someone's going to come into you, okay? Same thing. Your feet are too wide apart. You won't slide. Keep them shoulder width. All right, now ready? See, you didn't slide as much. Keep your weight on that leg. On the backward stop, all right? Skating backwards, you'll be going. When you make the quick V stop, you have to push your weight slightly forward. Stay down on your knees and grasp on inside edges. Same thing. Push. Okay, make the quick stop and hold. Low on the knees and your head up. Don't drop. Okay, and don't lean on your stick. Keep it up there. Understood? You also should be able to stop on one foot. When you're skating forward, you make a quick stop. You're going to put all your weight, again, the same technique. Just lift the foot up. Okay, you goalies, you should always stop and make sure you're in your stance. Don't leave the five hole open. Never know. Okay? What Cindy just said there, when you step backward, that's mean you stop. Some people stop backward, they go like this, they stop, and they go back like that. So that means you got no balance. When you step backward, you got to go backward, stop, and be strong on your legs, and it's come to the same point all the time. You got to have your balance. You got to use that stick to balance you, or your head. Your head's got to be even with your knees and your toes. Because when you stop in hockey, you got to make sure you're going to be pushed or something in front of the net. So that's why when you, when you stop, it's the same thing forward. If you stop, you go like this, and after you go backward, you're going to lose your balance. So when I stop, I stop, and now I'm strong. So that's why when you stop, you got you to have your balance all the time. Standing starts. Make sure you use the toe of your skate because a good standing start can add speed and acceleration to your game. Practice the 45 degree start. Use the toe of your skate to push off and take small, powerful steps. This method will allow you to get away faster and up to full speed as fast as possible. When you stop, stay square on your feet. Weight on the outside leg, feet shoulder width apart. Keep your head up, bend your knees, and always stop and be ready to move in either direction. We're going to work on what I call a power pumping drill. This is to help increase your thigh muscles and your calf muscles. It's a drill also to help you improve on your crossovers and strength for speed around the corners. Okay, I'll demonstrate it to you first. All it is, we'll be going around one circle. You take the inside leg and you bend down on it. Okay, you put your weight on that inside leg. The outside leg does all the work. So you're going to just pump with that foot, keeping it on the ice. That is the actual push for the crossover, if you think about it. So you're just going to pump. You stay down. You don't use the body. You keep it strong, and you just push. Okay? By rights, you should be able to do that drill for two minutes straight without stopping. Your legs will hurt and cramp up. It's the only way if you push yourself to develop those muscles. Ready? And keep your foot on the ice. Don't lift it off. Keep it on. Push. Bend your knees. Nice and easy. Keep going. Okay, now forward crossovers. The same type of action. You push and cross under with the inside leg. It's very important that both legs push with the same amount of speed and strength. If you're soften up on one side, you're going to put yourself off balance. You want to use the same amount of strength on both legs. So when you push to cross, okay, you've got to lift that leg up and over your equipment, especially the goaltenders. Push up and over. The inside leg has to push just as hard. Understood? Let's try it. Stretch the leg out and cross over. Push and cross. When you cross over, your outside leg, when it's placed down, must be put on an inside edge. Okay? Not over like that. You have to place your foot pushing right over so you feel your chin over your knee. Okay? That type of action. And your body weight, you should be able to hold that body weight on that leg. So you push and cross over on the inside edge. 
Understood? Same technique going backwards, except you're skating more to the ball of your foot. Watch. You're going to cross under. You stay down on your knees. Okay, you don't want to come up and down and up. You want to stay low. We're going to work on turns now. Okay? Can I just bore your goalie glove for a minute? We'll pretend that this is a person. All right? When you make just a slight turn, you want to be able to hold your balance and not have your feet come from underneath you when you have to go into the corner tight. So when you're skating forward and you make the slight turn, the first thing that moves are your shoulders. You always move your shoulders first. The next part, you stay low on your knees and put your weight all on the inside leg. The outside leg is a guideline. It's there to help you control your balance. Make sure it stays just shoulder width. Don't push it out too far. The third thing to remember is when you come in, you've turned and shoulders, you keep your head looking straight ahead or if you're carrying the puck, you keep it up, okay, so that you can see the puck out in front, not down close here. Also, you have to keep your hips in line. So when you go under, you don't want to stick like this because you'll slow down. You want to get speed out of that corner to beat that guy to the puck. Understood? So if this is a person here, I'm going to come in, you're going to turn quick. That's all it is. You put all that weight into the ice, but don't dig that you slow yourself down. Okay, now, I think if you would try and keep your shoulders a little more square instead of leaning over to the inside, okay, you'll be a little bit more balanced. Take a little bit bigger skate, a little faster. See how you do. Right down the boards. That's it. Come on, fast. And turn. That's it. Turn your shoulders. Do you want to try it? Okay, go. Now, did you see the inside leg sort of skid like this? Did you see that foot? That's because you didn't have your weight on that leg. You had your weight on the outside leg, so you're more vulnerable to get hit and go flying across the ice. Yvonne will try it now. <laughs> okay, you watch with a little more speed. Okay, I think what she said. He's got to turn the shoulders and hold. You see how solid he is all the way around? That's what you want. Hockey is really a series of turns. Keep the pressure on your inside foot when you're crossing over. Make sure you have equal pressure and equal strength with each foot in your crossover. Step into the turn. Don't bounce up and down. Distribute your weight evenly as you make a quick turn. Turn your shoulders first, your hips second. Keep your head level and stay low on your knees. Always be sure that you have the weight on the inside foot. Use the outside foot only as a guide and keep a low center of balance. For a defenseman, we have a turn called the mohawk. This is very important drill. When you're going back, okay, or forward, you have to be able to turn on a dime. So to do it slowly, all it is is a transfer of weight from one foot to the other foot. You're going a little bit faster. It's going to look the same way, okay? All you're going to do is just go fast and step. It's the same thing, just this. I have a drill that I work on with players from the age of four right up to the pros. Except the pros do it controlling a puck at the same time. You're going to step on one foot, turn and cross over, and step out the other way, turn and cross over. Step, turn, cross. It's all in the hips and it's the lateral positioning, lateral movement. You have to stay nice and loose so that you've got good balance so you can do it fast. Because you never know if I have to go around Yvonne this way or I have to go the other side. Skating backward is very important for hockey players because say you get a bad check, okay? So if I play right wing, I'm coming in the zone and I don't even stop. I'm waiting for the puck and the guy's losing the puck. I turn around and I skate the other way. So that's why why she said is to keep your head up all the time is very important because you got to look at the play all the time. Skating backwards is probably the hardest skating skill to master. Keep your head level and up at all times. Maintain a low center of gravity by keeping your knees bent. Have your stick in front to help you with your balance. 
When you do the backward crossover, reach and pull in for the speed, remembering to keep an equal amount of pressure and strength on each foot as you cross over. Use a C-cut and reach and pull for speed. Master the backward skating and do the drills. They'll help you become a much better hockey player. Skating drills are there so you can benefit. Do them and do them to your best ability every time. Larry, what I thought I would want to go over now is that on every power play, it's very important that you come out of your own end together. And it's very important that on any good power play, coming out of your own end, you must be on the move and you have to be able to know what the other person is doing. One of the most common ways of coming out now in hockey, whether it's European or in the National Hockey League or in any junior league, is that the centerman makes the swing behind the net. While the centerman makes the swing to the strong side, then the winger on that particular side cuts to the middle. We have a defenseman behind the net with the puck. The second defenseman is naturally in front of the net, always, with the offside winger or the weak winger staying on the boards on the opposite side. Section option is where the defenseman goes back, picks the puck up from the goaltender, center goes around the back of the net, carries it, drops it back, and then starts to carry it out. Third option, the same thing. Goaltender stops it, picks up the defense by the defenseman, center leaves it, takes a step, hits the winger crossing, and one pass and out. Passing and receiving are two very important aspects of the game of hockey. They go hand in hand with the other. Naturally, we know that the puck can be passed much quicker than we can skate. Therefore, it's very essential that we make good, sound passes, and at the same time, we receive the puck when we're moving from one area to the other. And naturally, the objective of hockey is to get the puck to the other end of the ice as quickly as we can, under control. The position of the puck we want to keep in front of us, not in our skates, not in, where we're going to have to look down at it. If we keep the puck in front of us, we're able to see through peripheral vision the puck, as well as by keeping it in front of us, we keep it away from the checker. The man receiving the pass. Number one, he must give the passer a target. Very difficult to make a perfect pass if we don't have something to, 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 to shoot it at. Secondly, the man receiving the pass must cup his stick. We know that we have two hard objects, one the puck and secondly the stick. When two objects like that come together, friction is created. As a result, if we're in receiving the puck, if we cup the stick, then along with the tape, the reason that we put tape in our stick is to break the friction, as well as a smooth surface of the puck, by cupping our stick, we're able to feather the pass as it comes in or cup it and able to control it without having it bounce off our stick. A second point in receiving the pass is that we give as the pass is received. We call this having soft hands. Another point in passing the puck, it is a push and a pull. It's a push with the, with the bottom hand and a pull with the top hand whether you're a right hand shot or a left hand shot. Passing of the puck, pull with the top, push with the bottom. The backhand pass is the same as the forehand pass. Because of the curvatures of the stick today, it is very important, once again, that we pass the puck off the most flattest part of our stick. And in this case, it's at the heel. Again, in handling the puck, we want to pass the puck off of this square part. We want to look at the person to whom we're passing to. And again, it's a push and a pull, just the opposite. In receiving, we do exactly the same thing. We must cut the stick, and as we receive the pass, we want to give that little give. Let's try it here, backhand. A little closer, a little quicker. Passing is the next uh, very basic fundamental, and it's so very important that you concentrate on putting the puck on a man's stick or leading him, putting the puck out in front of him so he can skate into it. It's just as easy to put the puck on a man's stick or out in front of him, if you're concentrating, than it is to put it behind him or in his feet. Now, you don't slap the puck at an individual. You pass the puck in a smooth motion, following through towards the target. Now, let's see if we can demonstrate this, guys. Mike, you go first. 
Let's see how important it is. That first pass out of an end, there was the puck on a man's stick, and he was gone. It's so very important, and you defensemen know it, Brian and Mike, how very important that first pass is. All right, let's do it from the other side so that we left-hand shooters have to backhand the pass. And again, I say it's so very, very important that it can be done either way, not only to the center men, but for all young hockey players. All right, let's do it. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, you're coming around that net. Here's that backward pass out in front on a stick. And you don't have to put it right on a stick because as you know, your momentum is forward. Pick a spot. Pick a spot if I come around that net and I'm at full speed, pick a spot out here and lay that puck out there. The flip pass is a pass that can, when executed, can become very effective in getting yourself into good scoring position. It's a difficult pass, it's not practiced that much, and it's something that has to be worked on over and over again, particularly in today's hockey, whereby we have the curved sticks. If you're on your forehand, it's much easier. If you're on your backhand, it's very difficult. The flip pass is exactly what it says. You're flipping the puck over the defending person's stick to your teammate, hoping that you'll put him in good scoring position. To put a little icing on the cake, guys, uh, to be able to pass that puck over top of a stick and lay it down on the ice so that it doesn't bounce, that's technique. Cut it so that it's spinning and it sits down flat on the ice and it doesn't come over there flopping like so, so it's hard to handle. The problem with the drop pass is that players have a tendency to throw the puck back, which results in giving the puck up at the other team's blue line, and as a result, the players that are attacking are trapped. What you have to do in the drop pass is exactly what it says. You drop the puck. You leave it there for the player skating into the puck to pick it up and then go to the net. Remember, the drop pass is exactly what it says, dropped at the blue line. Then, the player skating into the puck, give yourself good shooting position by putting yourself in the slot area. The other two attacking forwards, make sure when you're going to the net that you keep your stick on the ice. Passing is the key to teamwork in hockey. Cup the stick so you soften the blow. Try to have soft hands as you receive the pass. Push with the bottom hand and pull with the top when you're giving a pass. And give the passer a target. Pick your point as you shoot your pass, but don't slap at the puck. Push with the bottom and pull with the top. For the flip pass, cut the puck so it spins and lands flat. Flip it over the defender's stick. For the drop pass, leave the puck, drop it so the skater can skate into the puck and move into the slot for his shot or for a pass back to you. Practice your backhand pass until you're as comfortable with it as you are with your forehand pass. Don't hesitate, follow through, and always pass to a moving player, never one who's standing still. Okay, avec le gaucher. What we've just shown you now is that Mario Lemieux, as a right-handed centerman, play with a right-handed right wing and a left-handed left wing. There is two difference of passes. I will show you what other people do, like myself. Okay, just watch <laughs> what I do with a right-handed. I'm left-handed. Okay, to power Serge de Bonnier. That pass was too long which Mario didn't. Now, I will have a left-handed winger, which is very important. Watch for the suicide pass, which I will do, okay? That is a pass behind the left-handed. What Mario did is his passes to the right winger as a right-handed was right on his stick, and his passes to the left wing, to the right winger left was on his stick, but on his back end. I just made two suicide passes. One in front of the right-handed, where you can get hit at the blue line, and one behind the other one, where you can get killed at the blue line. That's very important. 
The importance of con controlling a park is also protecting it. And I think this is a word we don't use enough. I think Mario Lemieux can protect his park, and that's why he's the best. And I'll show you why he can protect the park well. If you want to just drift the park, Mario, when somebody's after him and tries to take him, look, instead of fighting me, he just, instead of doing this, fighting me, and he just put uh, his hand away. The same thing with the lower hand. If I try to do that, he just put. Too many people, too many guys fight with the puck. They always try and fight. They fight and they fight, so they stop. Instead of doing that, he does. So what we'll do is we'll do a drill that uh, uh, coaches should be doing every time they practice that. This is a way of protecting his puck on a breakaway or before he makes a pass. In other words, when he has this hand to protect himself, here, he can keep me away and still protect the puck. Too many hockey players try to do both at the same time, and it's very easy to push the puck. Okay. Okay. What I find is you, you may have to adjust your speed depending, of course, on, on who it is that's coming out of the end zone. If you're too fast, as was the case there, the man's going to come out, come out the center ice on you. If you're too slow, he's going to beat you with outside speed up the boards. But there's one thing that, that you have going for you. You know that as he goes behind the net, sometime he's going to have to cut up the ice. He's going to run out of room. And as a result, you angle the man so that hopefully he runs out of room along the side boards. Another, another thing that I noticed, which is very important, I think when you made the turn, you came and took the same direction instead of facing him and trying to stop him. Is, that a, is there a point there also? Yes, there is. Uh, it's pretty tough to check the man head on. What you have to do is get the proper angle on him and, and almost uh, move at him from the side. When, once the man's taken out along the boards, then the second man can come in and get the loose puck. Uh, that's pretty well the way uh, it's got to be done, I, I think, okay. for checking. You, the first man ties the man up, the second man comes and gets the loose puck. Okay. You eliminated the man, but you use the air, the center of gravity, more than the shoulder. Is there a, is there a, a point to that? <laughs> well, I, I, I think you want to get as much as your body in front of the man as you can. As you can and, uh, the thing usually is to break his stride so he can't go anywhere and as a result the loose puck lays there and your man can come in and get it. It's very important to know that the puck carrier facing a defenseman with the stick there instead of having his stick in front is a left-handed. I'm going to ask him what is his first impression and his first move when he's reading the play, what comes to his mind? Paul? Um, well, I think basically if I'm caught in a position where my stick is to the right hand side like this. I think a natural move for a forward, instead of going to this side where I can come in like this and bring my stick over, would be to carry the puck underneath my stick and try to beat me to the weak side because naturally my body would come this way. If myself as a defenseman got myself in that position, which is the wrong position to be in, I would try not to overcompensate and throw my body to one side. I would move myself in like this, still keeping my stick there uh, because if by chance he does cut in that way, I'll be able to poke it away from him. If he comes down the boards, I'll be able to get him with the hip. That's very important. If, and I want to put emphasis on the word that Paul said, my weak side. When you say weak side, it doesn't mean that he has a weak side. He hasn't. But sometimes game situation has weak sides, and I think that's one of them. What is very important now to watch the way he looks is extremely good defensively. Why? Because he always stayed facing the, 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 uh, the puck carrier and using his hand. In other words, when he said weak side with the stick, what did we see him do very well is put that hand up, turn around with the, with the player and direct him away from his goal. I think that what I enjoy the most about this man is that he didn't say nothing about his very, very strong side, is the hand without the stick. That's what we'd like to explain to defensemen. Whenever you're in a situation <coughs> where you don't have time to use two hands on your stick, use this hand. Use it the way Paul Coffey just used it. Use it to bring the guys in the corner, to take him away from an angle. I would like to uh, ask you if you agree with me, Paul. I definitely do. I think that, as you mentioned, if 
a lot of times for defense, when I feel that the right way to play a one-on-one -on -one is to have one hand on your stick. I think when you have two hands, you show more of a weak spot. Because if he goes this way, you can't get over. But if you have one hand on your stick, use that for the po check. And this is your guideline, your steering wheel, where you put him anywhere you want. If you want him to this side, you put him there. If you want him this side, you put him there. I think that's real important to have the free hand. If you have the puck out in front of you, um, coming down on the goalie, chances are you're not going to be able to shoot the puck because you can't shoot the puck with the, the straight out in front of you. Therefore, you're going to deke, you move it over to the side to your forehand or over to the, your backhand for a shot or a deke or whatnot. But um, if you have the puck out in front of you, chances are a goaltender's going to, a smart goaltender's going to realize that you're going to deke because you naturally you can't shoot the puck when it's straight out in front of you. Um, the difference between that, if you have the puck over on your side, tends to freeze the goaltender if the puck's out at the side because if he makes a move or commits himself, you're ready to take a quick shot or move the puck over to your backhand or whatnot. If the puck's at your side, you're ready to take a quick shot. If the puck's out in front, chances are you're going to deke, or it takes a little more time to move the puck over to your forehand. hockey game and to become a good hockey player, player you got to learn how to shoot the puck. There's three basic shots you have. You have a slap shot, a wrist shot, and the backhand and to become a good goal scorer it takes a lot of practice. It's important you have a good hockey stick. Whether you know you got to be careful you don't have your stick too long, you got to have the proper lie of stick and also the proper curve. Some people like to use a half inch curve, other hockey players don't. I think Whatever curve you want to use, you want to make sure it stays within the rules. But it takes a lot of practice to develop a good shot. To, to slap a, a puck, known as a slap shot, I think it's important that you always have your hands in a comfortable position on the hockey stick. You can't have your hands too close together and you can't have it too far down. Have it in a comfortable position so that when you go ahead and shoot it, you can see where the net is or you can see where your other players are on the ice. If you get your hands too far down on the hockey stick, your head's down in the ice. You can't be able to see the net or see the goaltender. So it's important that you have your hands in a real comfortable position on the hockey stick. To slap the puck also I think, or I know that it's very important to have your body, okay, position over top of the puck. Reason being is that when you go to slap the puck, you have your whole body weight into the slap shot. You just don't have your arms slapping the puck. You have your whole body. It's important, I think, to stand over top of the puck, to have the puck on the inside part of your heel. This way, when you go over top of it, you can get your shot away quicker. You can bring the stick back. You don't have to bring your stick way back up high like this. Just back here is far enough. Drop your shoulder down. All your weight's on your forward position here. So that when you follow through, you're over top of the puck, you're looking up and seeing where you're shooting it, you come down on it without a high raise of the stick just back here, it's full body movement from fore, fore leg to your back leg. When you follow through, you're hitting the puck. Where I'd like to hit it is always in the center of the hockey stick. The reason in the center of the hockey stick is that if you hit it off the toe, you're losing the power of your shot. The stick is not as strong at the toe as it is in the middle. And also, if you happen to change your mind at the last second, you can always make a good pass off of it. So it's important that you hit the puck in the middle of your hockey stick, your hands are in a comfortable position, and also the puck, that your body's over top of the puck. You're shifting your weight from your foreleg to your back. So when you hit the puck, you're following through with it and you're watching where it goes. If you follow through high, the puck will go high. If you follow through low, the puck will go low. But it's important to be watching where it is. You should always make sure when you get the puck on your stick, it, like I said, it takes a lot of practice to get the puck in the proper position before you shoot. Your hands in a comfortable position, your body shifts from your foreleg to your back leg, and you're always watching where you're shooting. The other shot I like to go on to is, is the wrist shot. The wrist shot really doesn't change all that much. You gotta make sure you got the proper stick again. Your hands are in a comfortable position. On the stick, like I said, you don't wanna get it down too far or you don't wanna get it too close. 
If you get it up here too close, you lose the power off your shot. If you got it down too far on the stick, you're not watching, you're not able to see all over the ice surface. Your hands are in a comfortable position. Again, on the wrist shot, I like to shoot it from the middle of the hockey stick on the blade. That way you don't lose the power off the toe or lose the puck from control off the heel. You always have it in the middle of your blade. Same thing, your hands are in a comfortable position again. You're always watching, knowing where you're going to be shooting the puck. Okay, if you have your hands down too far, your head's buried down, you can't see what's going on. If you have it too close up here, you lose the power off your shot. Puck's in the middle of the stick, you're always watching. Again, it's important you position the puck. Your body should be over top of the puck. Not a way out here, or not in too, too close to you. In a, in a position where it's off the inside of your front foot. Okay, same thing. You can take it from there, you pull it back. All right, and when you wrist it through, same thing, you got your, your weight of your body on your fore, fore leg, and when you follow through with the puck, it switches. So it goes from back to front. Same way as like a slap shot. Okay, so you got your weight from back here, you're wristing the puck, shift to your forefoot. Okay, this way you got good balance on the ice. If you happen to follow through in their shot, you're not going to get knocked down. On your backhand, it's important again that you shift your weight from your back leg to your foreleg. Your hands again are in a comfortable position. The puck on your stick should be in the middle, and you're always watching. Backhand's a very important shot. It can up your goal production, I believe, by 10 goals a year if you got a good backhand. But it's another shot that takes a lot of practice. You got to go, like I said, hands are in a comfortable position again. Your weight goes from your back leg to your foreleg and always watching where it's going. Follow through high, the puck will go high. If you follow through low, the puck will go low. So your three basic shots, the slap shot, the wrist shot, and the backhand. Again, the hands got to be in a comfortable position. Okay, your hands are in a comfortable position. You're shifting your body weight from your back leg to your foreleg. Okay, if you follow through on it, whether it's a backhand or slap shot or, or wrist shot, if you follow through high, the puck will go high. If you follow through low, the puck will go low. But the most important thing is it takes a lot of practice. You've got to work on your shot every day to become a good shooter. I'm in front of the net. I got to make sure after I shoot the puck. Then I got my two feet on the ice and ready for the defenseman to come and hit me. If I'm like this, if I got one leg up and I shoot the puck, I'm going to go back and I'm going to fail. Okay, so that's why it's very, very important to be in front of the net, stick on the ice, and be ready for the defenseman in the same time. Phil Esposito and Anders Hedberg scored a lot of goals from out in the slot area because they could get the puck and fire it all in the same motion. You have to have your thought process of shooting all the way down into your hands before that puck hits the stick. Then all you have to do is release it. See, the important thing is not how really hard you shoot the puck. It's how quickly you get it and get it away. Now I'm going to throw some out from the corner and I want you guys to get the puck. As Hedberg said, get it and shoot it. Here we go. The ability to get the puck and shoot it quickly or a quick release is a definite advantage. This player, after stopping the puck, lifts his stick to shoot. Now while he may get off a good shot, he's already given the goalie time to set and make the save. When the puck hits your stick, shoot it. Release it quickly and right at the net. Quick release means goal production. It's very hard to shoot the puck only with your wrist because you gotta have a very, very strong wrist to shoot the puck. That's why you gotta use your leg and your arms and your shoulder, everything in the same time. So when I shoot the puck, I bend down and I look at the goalie, look where the puck is, look at the goalie, bend down and push. If the goalie came out, now I can really fake the shot and D 
peek him because the goalie is way out of his net, from of his net. So if I'm coming fast, I get two choices. To look at the goalie, look at the puck first. After I know the puck is there, I look at the goalie. And if the goalie came out, I deke him. If the goalie backs up, I shoot. We're going to have different shot now. The first shot we're going to show, it's everybody knows almost that shot. It's the most easiest one. It's to push with the legs and the wrist at the same time. Harder I'm going to push with my legs, harder my shot's going to be. If I push like this, I'm going to have that strength. But if I push harder with my legs, harder with my wrist, if I go and push, I'm going to have much harder shot because I push with everything. My body, my legs, my wrist, everything goes forward. So that's why I look where the puck is and, and shoot. What is really, really important is to use your legs and to keep your follow through on your stick. Because if I shoot the puck and I, I stop my follow through, my shot not going to be as hard than if I follow through. That's why it's very important to be like a golf player. If I shoot the puck, I bend down and I follow through my stick. That's why it's really important to follow through. If you shoot, you shoot and you follow through. The next shot we're going to do is when I'm stopped. It's called a flip shot. It's a little bit harder to do, but you got to practice. And what practice is the speed. It's not that strong than the wrist shot and the slap shot, but it's the quickness you're going to have on your shot. It's, this end is loose. You go over the puck and you just twist your stick so you hit the puck like this. And it's, it's called a flip shot. You're in front of the goalie, you flip your stick and you hit the puck and it's the same way again. You got, you got to have your follow through, you got to use your legs and you got to look at the goalie at the same time. So you just bend down, twist your stick and you just go quick. So if you do it in one movement, the puck is there, you go like this. So that's the flip shot. You got the other shot, it's called shot on the ice. It's you take the puck on your heel and you sweep the puck like a broom. That's a different shot than you use when you want to shoot on the ice. You bend down again, you use your legs, you put the puck on your heel and you make sure the puck goes all the way through your stick like this. So it's the same thing again, you use your legs, you bend down, you shoot on the ice and you keep your stick on the ice. Shooting was a big part of my game when I played professionally and I guess maybe all the way up through the minor ranks, through junior and into professional. So as we go through our exercises, we're going to go in from the center, we're going to shoot the puck low, we're going to keep it out in front of us and getting it away quickly without the goaltender knowing what's happening. Then we're going to shoot the puck high. By, that, by doing that, we just carry our follow through just uh, a little higher. Then we'll slap the puck and as we go through all the exercises, uh, then we'll explain it as we go. So let's start off. John, are you ready? That puck's out in front. We keep, keep skating and keep shooting. Make sure, guys, that when, you're, when you go in there, don't stop skating. Try to shoot that puck in stride. So when you're carrying it in there, get up ahead of speed because the faster you're going, the faster that puck is going before you let it go. Then when you let it go, make sure you throw all your arms, that upper body weight into it, and fire it. And let's try to keep the puck low this first time, and then we'll fire it a little higher. And John, don't be frightened. <laughs> okay, John, go ahead. Puck out in front, right out in front. Now, now see, what John did was he went, went in, and he got in to where he wanted to shoot the puck, and what'd you do? Started to glide, did he not? Went in, got in close, he skated real good, and then when he went to shoot it, he went like so. Okay? What we want to try to emphasize is being able to get that puck away on stride. Okay, Brian, go ahead. Puck out in front, head up, keep skating, good. Okay, see, so he kept skating. Mike, puck out in front, 
Wait in that bottom hand, head up, and keep skating when you shoot that puck. What we're trying to show is how the, the follow through will traject that puck up in the upper corners. Okay, Mike. Don't go in too close now. Checking is another important aspect of the game of hockey and when done properly can be done very effectively. A couple of things that we should remember. Number one is take one side away from the person whom you're trying to check. Number two, if you're the checker, make sure you check through the player's gloves. That is the only area which will not move. You can get a shoulder uh, fake, a head fake, a knee fake, but the glove area is an area which will go wherever the person is going. When we take a person into the boards, the person is down. Remember, I said you go at him in such an area way that you take one area away from him. I'm going at him on an angle, therefore he cannot go backwards. The only place he can go is forwards. He cannot get too far ahead or you will not catch him. You cannot get too far uh, behind him or you will not be able to catch him either. What you simply have to do is time it in such a way that you move into him. As you move into him, you check through the glove area. As you get to him, you want to spin him around into the boards. You want to take advantage of your own body position by using the strongest muscle in your body, which is your legs. Now I have him pinned onto the boards. He cannot move. I will now hope for some help to come in to get the loose puck. Check through the glove area and we've got him pinned to the boards. The puck spins off and now you are in a position to pick up the loose puck using your body to block him out and go on towards his net. I'm still learning. I've been playing defense now for six years and uh, I met with Eddie Van Imp and uh, Bobby Orr and you never, you never learn enough about the game. And, I learned a couple things last year that really helped me a lot. Because a lot of times I was getting beat one on one, especially with the player at their speed come down, and I'd be backing up towards the corner of the rink, playing the man right in front of me. And what I was taught to do by them was, uh, when a player of your speed is coming down to me, to just play him off my inside leg and back up towards the net. I know you have to go to the net to score a goal, so instead of me backing up towards the corner where you're skating, I got to make you come right through me to get to the net and. Uh, I know this, uh, it took me about four or five years uh, of playing pro hockey to learn that. And, uh, you know, if kids can learn that at a young age, it'll make a much better hockey player sooner. Stand up, defensemen. Stay together. Play the body. Play the body and take him to the outside. Very good. In checking, don't try to put the man through the boards. Aim for the hand area. Angle in on the player, checking the glove area and pinning him to the boards with your legs. Lift his stick and move away with the puck, or allow a teammate to come in and play the puck. With an attacker coming towards you, play him off your inside leg. Watch his chest for his move and then ride him off into the boards when he does make his move. If you think about your line mates, your teammates, and try to put them in for an empty net goal, or cover up for them when they've made a mistake, they're all going to be thinking of you. So I think attitude, is the very, very most important part of our daily routine, be it in business or in sport. And I think the next most important thing is to have fun with it. The Sports Video Summary. Use this as a video checklist. We'll cover some of the points that we've already gone through in the program, but there could be a few surprises. Skating. Full leg extension and using the ball of the foot to push off with every stroke gives you power. Bend your knees and keep your center of gravity low. Move your arms smoothly with your body movement and lean forward for speed. Remember, the stronger skater you are, the better hockey player you're going to be. And the better hockey player you are, the more fun you're going to have. The key to crossing over is equal pressure is applied with each foot. Don't hop. Bend your knees and keep your weight forward. Use your edges. Always remember, equal pressure and equal strength with each step of a crossover. The one foot stop can help you change directions quickly. Be sure to stay square and keep your weight back, not forward, and always keep your head up. Turning quickly is a key skill. Remember, turn your shoulders first, keep them square. 
turn your hips second. Keep the weight on your inside leg. The outside leg is used as a guide. Keep your head level and your body square and stay low on your knees and solid. Accelerate through the turn. The lateral drill. It helps a player stay in line. Pair off with a buddy and work on lateral drills back and forth and keep the man in front of you at all times. This will help you as a defenseman and as a forward because you'll know what the defenseman's thinking. The forward pass. The first pass is the most important pass. It gets the play going. Always lead the player. Pick a point ahead of the player and let him skate into the pass. Follow through. Where your stick ends up pointing is where the pass is going to end up eventually. Cup the stick and bring it back as you receive the pass. That's called having soft hands. Don't slap at the puck. Push with the bottom hand and pull with the top hand. Use a smooth motion and remember to follow through at all times. Again, bring your stick back when you receive the pass. Push with the top hand this time and pull with the bottom one during the backhand pass. The drop pass is just that, but make it to the blue line first and then leave the puck dropping. Don't fire it back for the man. He's got to skate into the puck and then head for the slot position. Don't shoot the puck back. Drop it. The flip pass is easy. Flip the puck over the defender's stick. Remember to lead your player. Try to cut the puck so it lands flat and doesn't flop around. Skating and passing are all individual arts, as is shooting. Make sure you have the proper stick, the right size and proper lie. Position your hands comfortably on the stick and put your body right over the puck. Shift your weight with each shot and use the center of the blade. Remember, follow through. Watch where your shot's going. Use your legs to help you with your shot. Practice a quick release and practice your shot every day. The more practice, the better you're going to become. And the better you're going to become means you're going to score more goals. Quick release is the key. Get it and shoot it. Use your whole body and not just your wrist with a wrist shot. Shooting in stride means keep skating. Using your forward momentum to help you with your shot. Keep your weight towards your lower hand. Don't coast or glide. Practice cutting in and getting your shot away quickly. The backhand shot. Look where you're shooting. Use a smooth, even motion. A high follow-through means a high shot. A low follow-through means your shot's going to go low. The flip shot is a very effective one. Turn your stick on its toe. Keep your lower hand loose and turn the stick quickly to fire off a flip shot. Always be sure to follow through. As with the sweep shot, Keep the puck on the heel of your stick. Sweep the puck and follow through. It keeps the puck on the ice, but it looks like the shot is going to go high. A quick release is something that every player has to work at. Shooting as soon as the puck gets to you. It doesn't allow the goalie to set, and it gives you a distinct advantage as a shooter. You know when you're going to shoot. The follow through controls where your shot will go. When you follow through high, your shot will be high. A low follow through means a low shot. This rule applies to all the shots. Wrist shot, backhand, slap shot, and sweep. Follow through high, high shot. A low follow through, a low shot. One on one with the goalie is a particular skill. When the goalie moves out, deke him. If he moves back into his net, you're forced to shoot. Practice all of the shots and all of the moves, but most of all, have fun. So we'll try it one more time. Ah, uh, shit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you Okay, one more time. One more time. Just yeah, don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. Take your time. Okay. Oh yeah. Here. Just a clock. It takes me. Second man. Good play. You know, that was a lot better. And that's all the time. That's the way it should be. Hard right around. 
The goalie couldn't do a thing, both defensemen, they didn't know, so that's why we had we had control right there. And this is good right there? So I'll be the third man, I'll be the third man, because I'll be yep. here, I'll okay. talk to the guys, so okay. just send two guys in, that's okay. all. Okay, we're going to go. Okay. Est-ce que tout le monde est prêt? Okay, everybody, let's okay. go. On va aller à Night Coin. Okay, let's go. Okay. Go after him. Okay. Okay. Good apart. That's it. Good. That's good. But like, first of all, make up your mind first. When you go there, you play the defenseman the defense man or you play the puck. No, you hesitated a little bit there. So you didn't know. Should I take the man? Should I take the puck? You don't. Then, 